As we ended our last video, we got all seven of our spokes in place and ready to go. Now it's time to begin weaving. What we're going to use uh, is 3 16 flat oval reed. This reed is a little bit different than the reed we were using before because it has a flat side and it has an oval side. The oval side is the good side, so you don't have to try to figure out which is good and which is bad. We're going to be using this to weave around the basket in a continuous weaving pattern, which means you're going to weave until the reed runs out and then we'll add another one. Place your reed in the water. Only keep it in there about 30, it just, just long enough for it to get wet. It doesn't need to be in there more than about 30 seconds. Your thinner, smaller reed gets wet much quicker. Shake it a little bit and bring it back over to where you're at. To get started, what we're going to do is we're going to taper the end of this reed. Because this is continuous weave, you want to be able to continue it around and keep it in a flat manner. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to taper about three inches worth of the reed just by cutting it slowly in an angled fashion and bring it until it's cut loose. That's about three inches worth. Once you've done that, we're now going to be able to start weaving. This is the back of your basket. See the holes aren't here, the holes are actually in the front where your keys go. So we're going to start in the back of your basket. We're going to tuck the reed behind the third weaver, the third spoke from the left. And we're going to begin to weave in a twill pattern that is under one and over two. And watch what we do here. Keeping these as evenly spaced as possible, we can always readjust them as we go. I've got it behind one. I'm going to go over one, two, release here, go behind this spoke, and I'm going to clip it back. These clips will come out after we get a couple of rows done. Then I'm going to go over two, because we were under one, over two, under one, over one, and we're going to bring it around the handle, which is also considered a spoke. So it's one, two, and then I'm going to bring it around here to the front, undo this clip, go behind, clip it back together, go over two, behind one, over two, behind one, come around the handle, keeping it tight to the handle. So I've went under here, we're going to go over one, over two, we're going to go behind one, re-clip, And we've gotten back to where we started, but now it's going to be under one, over two, one, two, unclip from here, over two, one, two, behind this one, and your pattern begins. Over two, and we're going to go behind one, which happens to be the handle. So we're going to take the reed, and slip it behind the handle. So it comes around and is behind the handle. And that's behind one over two. So I'm now going to go behind this one. Now once I go behind that, around that handle, you can see across here this will have a tendency to pull in on you. So I take a clip and I bring it in here just to hold it in place. Continue this process all the way around the basket until you have run out of reed. Then I want you to stop. What we'll do is we'll pick up and I'll show you how to add a piece of reed to this. All right, we have now come to the end of our current weaver. 
before we add a weaver, which is what we're going to do next, I wanted to talk about a couple things on the basket. First of all, this is a good time for you to straighten up your or move around any of your um, stakes that might have gotten moved in the process. This little packer is a good way to do that and get them moved around to make sure that they stay straight. Okay. The other thing is, is while you're weaving, you want to make sure that you're continually packing your basket down. And this would be a good time to make sure that it's all been packed down so that all your weaving is nice and tight. Because as your reed dries, it's going to loosen up. The other thing I wanted to show you is, do you see the pattern on the side here? You need to make sure that your pattern is going two, one, two, one, two, one because if it doesn't, you've probably made an error somewhere along the way. This will help keep you straight to make sure you haven't missed something. Now it's time to go ahead and add a piece. I usually try to add on the back side of the basket. Remember, this doesn't have the holes down here. That's how I know that this is the back side of the basket. To stop, I take and when I've gone over two and under one, then I'm gonna stop here I've got this excess reed coming out here. I'm going to cut this off. I'm under one and I'm going to go over two. Well, I'm going to cut this off right here to where the reed ends on the over two. I then take my next weaver, the long piece that I'm going to start with, I slide it up under this one right here so it lays on top of the old weaver all the way across I can then begin to weave again and I go because I was over two I can go under one and then you continue to weave around over two under one and so on Keep going up until you've woven about 10, 20 rows and stop. I'll show you how we're going to stop the weaver and we'll put in our rim row. All right, now you've gotten to the end of your weaving. This is the actually the 20th row coming across here on the back side of the basket. What we're going to do is we're going to taper down just like we did at the beginning, only we're going to do it up here. This way it evens out your basket to make it flat. So we're under here and we would normally go over two and go under one. Well, we're going to go ahead and cut this off right about here so that we can tuck that in. So let's cut that off, get rid of this. Now I'm going to unweave this just for a second and come in here and I'm going to now trim this down to where I taper it. I'm going to start it here and taper just like I did in the beginning. Slowly just angle it down. So you have a nice long taper. We now come back over here. I'm over one over two, behind one, over two, behind one, and you've now, you now see that you have this is even with this. The next step is to go ahead and put the rim row on. We're going to be using a piece of one quarter inch flat reed. When we at, attach the rim row, I want to make sure the rim row goes on the outside of the handle. So I'm going to figure if it's over here, it's going to be under, over, under, over, under. The rim row is put on in a regular over, under pattern. Don't worry about it. It's going to be different than what we've been doing. I slip it in behind this, this reed. We're going to slip it behind the third one from the left, just like we started. And I'm just going to put it in an over, under pattern, over, under, over and under, bring it around. If it's over on this, okay, under on this, this is going to help stabilize your basket and it will attach the rim. 
and then I bring it in and I bring it to the to the inside and I'm not going to lap this over what I'm going to do is cut this so that it butts I'm going to bring it down inside here cut both of them at the same time so that the two pieces butt against one another this is the time where you're going to want to pack your basket well because our next step is going to be cutting and tucking we'll do that in the next video but make sure that you've taken your packer and everything is packed down well because once we do a cut and tuck you can't undo it so this is a good time to, to do this a lot of times when I'm weaving here at home I'll take and I will leave this basket to dry overnight and, it, and you can pack much better our next step will be cutting and tucking all of these stakes to the inside of the basket so it attaches the rim to the basket that will be done in the next video which will be step three of the key keeper cutting and tucking and applying the rim